Hey guys, it's Janice from Ozark Family Homestead. Today I'm making French bread. Now this is a bread recipe that I've had, oh goodness, probably since 2006 or so, and we've been using it consistently all that time. It makes an exceptional French bread, and I think it's easy. You guys know I like simple, right? I like simple recipes. So this one is tried and true, and anybody can do it. Very easy. So I'm going to make that today because for supper tonight, Sarah is making lasagna soup. And if you have not seen that video yet, it should be posted prior to this one. That's the plan at least. So if you want a good supper of lasagna soup and French bread, you need to stay tuned and check this out. I'm about to get started. So here we go. Okay, first step, we're going to start off over here by the sink because I'm going to need some water. First step is easy. We're going to start uh, by mixing up our yeast. I use the active dry yeast. I think I bought this at Sam's Club. I am going to use one tablespoon, just put it in a bowl, and one and a half cups of hot tap water. I'm just going to get my water good and hot. Put one and a half cups in there. Give it a little stir. And then I'm going to let this sit. And I'm going to let it sit while I am mixing together the other ingredients over there on my counter. I've still got big globs of stuff on there. When you're doing this, just go ahead and stir it up so you don't have those big globby glumps, that's the technical term, you know, of your yeast in there. All right, Sam, you want to come on in here a little bit closer and let everybody see kind of how it's going. They're dissolving some. There you go. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You just don't want the big glumps like I had there at the beginning. I'm going to press this against the side and try to get the majority of them. See that big one? We'll just do that. All right. This is looking good. I think we can move on to the next step. This will sit here. We're going to go back over to the island to do the next step. All right, guys, we're ready to do the next step. We have our yeast soaking over there in the water, and I'm gonna start off with four cups of, this is just all-purpose flour. I get the unbleached and unenriched flour from Azure Standard. You can use regular stuff off the store shelf, and it's gonna turn out just fine. But four cups is what I'm going for for this batch. Now, by using those this four cups here, I'm going to end up with two big, beautiful loaves of French bread. I'm always surprised every time whenever I make these, just how big the loaves get. Because they grow a lot when they're rising. And a lot of times, even with it, us having a larger family, we have nine people in the family, even with us having that many, we will only eat one of the loaves. And a lot of times I can take that second loaf and I can put it in the freezer. And then we have an easy, easy uh, loaf of bread available when I need to just pull it out of the freezer and go. All right, four cups, done with that. Next, salt. Um, I use Celtic sea salt, the fine. One teaspoon of that. Oh, here's a trick for you guys. I buy my salt in bulk from Azure Standard and just store it in a jar in my cabinet. Don't use your metal lids on things like this. Over time, they will rust. This is a lid that we kept from a peanut butter jar and they fit perfectly on your regular mouth mason jars and then it never rusts either. So this is what I use for my salt I also have a coarse uh, Celtic sea salt that I keep as well, and it's more wet. It will especially rust a metal lid. So 
plastic lids are good. Okay, um, now I'm going to do sugar. This is just plain white granulated sugar. I've also used evaporated cane crystals as well. And I am going to do one tablespoon of sugar in there. And then my oil. Now I purposefully did the sugar first because this is going to mess up my tablespoon. This way I can use one spoon for both the sugar and the oil. I'm going to need two tablespoons of oil and I'm using olive oil. You can use a different oil if you choose to. Okay. So in here we have four cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt, two tablespoons of oil, and one tablespoon of sugar. Got all that and I am going to just give it a mix. And it doesn't look like much because the only liquid in there is that oil right now. But we're about to add the yeast and the water to this. Let me go grab it and then we'll add that to the bowl. All right, at this point, we've got our little mixture here. It's mostly dry because all the wet in here is just oil. But this is ready to go in. So you see how it mostly dissolved? We don't really have those big, glumpy, gloopy glo globs. Yeah, that stuff. I'm going to pour it in. And we're going to go ahead and mix this up. Now, I don't want you to get all stressed out when you mix this up and it's super stiff. It's supposed to be super stiff here at first. And this is all going to work out because you're going to take note of the time. Right now for me, it is 4.02. And I know that one hour from now, so at 5.02-ish, right in that area, I should be done kneading this. What I'm going to do is every 10 minutes, I am going to come in here and I'm going to knead this. And I'll bring the camera with me and you guys can see how this dough evolves in those 10 minute increments here over the next hour. So I'm mixing this up just as best as I can. If you can see here, Sam, show them in there. There is still flour and stuff in the bottom of this bowl. It is not fully incorporated and that is okay with this recipe. It will all work out, I promise you. Okay, at this point, I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes, and then we will come back. We will knead this some more, and you'll get to see how this dough changes over time. We'll be back in 10 minutes. All right, the first 10 minutes have passed. My timer just went off. I'm going to come and knead this around, and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do it. I'm going to take my wooden spoon, and I'm just going to kind of pull it around a little bit here. And again, you can see there is still flour laying down there in the bottom. That is okay. I'm going to do this a little bit. And then I'm going to let it sit again. And I'm going to set my timer again for another 10 minutes. And I promise you by the end of this hour-long process, all of that will be incorporated and the dough will be beautiful. Okay, I'll see you again in another 10 minutes. And another 10 minutes has passed. If you look at it now, it's trying already to grow some. It has risen slightly, but I'm still, I'm going to knead it down using this type of pulling motion here. And each time when we do this, we're going to have a little bit less and less and less of that flour in the bottom. I'm scraping the sides a little bit. Yep, there's less flour in the bottom already. See, I told you guys, it's all going to work out. We're going to have beautiful bread here at the end. All right, that's good for this time. I'll be back in 10 more minutes. All right, you need to look at it, guys. It's starting to change. Another 10 minutes has passed, so you see, it's getting all poofy, but we're still going to need it. And again, I'm just kind of scraping and pulling. And look, do you see any flour in the bottom of it now? It is all incorporated here into the dough, and it's getting prettier and prettier. 
And sometimes when I pull and press and pull and press, I can hear a little poof of an air bubble in there. Oh, I don't know if you heard the little squeak of an air bubble. So, all right, it's looking good. I'm setting the timer for another 10 minutes and we'll be back. All right, another 10 minutes have passed. And if you look at it now, it is definitely trying to rise on me here. So I'm going to smash it down. Again, I'm kind of just scraping the sides and pulling towards me. See how clean that's coming on the bottom now? Because everything has come together. I'm still hearing those little squeaky air pocket things. Good. It really doesn't take much on these every 10 minutes, just a little bit to mix everything back up and then you let it go again. I'm going to set the timer another 10 minutes. All right, the 10 minutes have passed. This will be our very last kneading here. I want you to go ahead and look at it and see what it looks like. I'll knead it up again. Again, I'm just kind of pulling and folding in kind of scraping the sides as I do this. When we come back this next time, we are going to roll it out and make it look like a pretty loaf on a baking sheet. And then it starts, I, don't, I think that's when the fun part starts. So, all right, I am done with the kneading part here. I'll see you all back in, one, in another 10 minutes and we'll do the fun stuff. All right, we're ready to get going and getting this dough shaped into loaves. I've recruited a little helper here. She thinks she can do this next step, so we're gonna see if she can. The next step is we're gonna go ahead and oil these two pans. Since we're making two loaves, we'll put a loaf here and a loaf there. We're gonna use the olive oil. I did wanna point out, okay, these stainless steel baking sheets, I bought these in 2010, so I have been using these for 13 years. They are worth every penny. So I can keep them relatively clean with just a steel wool pad since they're stainless steel. That doesn't hurt them. And so I've added them to our family. We have an Amazon store of products that we use and we recommend. So we have these in the Amazon store. Um, there's a tab called um, household and kitchen I think is the category that they're under so if you would like these check out that Amazon store and that household and kitchen tab and you just get a good product and we get a little commission off of uh, you buying from our family store so what we're gonna do is just put a little dollop of olive oil on each of these and we have clean hands and we're just gonna start all over the pan, primarily in the middle because this is where the loaf is gonna primarily be in the middle, but it's so easy just to go all the way to the edge that that's what I do. And then we don't have to worry about it sticking. And now we get to play with the dough. That's the part you really wanna do is play with the dough, isn't it? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do next. You think you about got it done? Think she's done right now. Okay, we'll move on to the dough now. All right, we need to now get this dough and turn it into a loaf so we can put on these greased baking sheets here. So I'm gonna start off, I'm gonna take just a little handful of my flour here and we're gonna put it on the countertop. And we're gonna take this dough See, it comes out pretty clean. Right there. I'm scraping the little bits of dough out of the bottom here. And we're gonna get ready to divide this here into two pieces. Okay, you wanna set that on the counter over there, baby? And we're just going to eyeball it 
so that we get roughly the same size. I'm just going to pinch it down the middle here. So I have roughly two pieces that are about the same size. Doesn't have to be perfect. We're going to start with one. And we're going to roll it out. As a side note, this is Sean's grandmother's rolling pin. So this is your great grandma's rolling pin. Hear those air bubbles squeak and pop. I kind of roll it. You hear it squeaking? <laughs> That's what it does right there. You know it's good bread when it's squeaking at you. Okay, just kind of in a oval just an oblong thing here and it's stretchy so it always tries to contract back in on itself now i'm going to start rolling it up long side the long side is rolling up here okay now let's see i got everything stuck to me this is the tricky part because you're going to try to seal the ends here and they don't want to seal really because you've got flour everywhere. So do your best job. And I promise you in the end you are still going to have a beautiful edible loaf. Your food does not have to be perfect. They're going to love it. And I'm going to set it over here. We will come back to that. I'm going to do the second one here. All right, Abigail wants to help with the second one. So you're going to take Granny's rolling pin. Did you see how Mama rolled it out? Mm -hmm. Okay, you try rolling it out. <laughs> there you go, baby. Let's roll this end on out a little bit further. Here we go. And then come down here to the middle. Roll this end back towards you. You hear it squeak? It's going to roll right off the side. Here, let's let Mama turn it around. Why don't you roll it out this way now? There you go. You're putting some force in there. And then right here, roll it this way. There you go. Okay, this way, and let's make it long here. This way. You've got a creative shape there, baby. Trying to work out. <laughs> you're, do you're doing good. It keeps contracting back on you, doesn't it? There you go. All right, let Mama do this part right here. It kind of looks like a heart. You made a heart loaf for us. Okay. This will work. And again, we're just going to long side. We're going to start rolling. I'm going to go from this direction this time. And we're just rolling it up. And then again, we're going to try to seal it, but it's not going to seal easily because of that flour on there. We're just going to do our best. Okay. And I'm kind of pinching it a little bit to try to seal it and poking it down. All right, there we go. We're going to put this one on the other sheet. And we'll come back in just a second. I'm going to grab a knife. Here, see this one's coming apart here. Sam, look right here. This one's coming apart. I'm going to give that a little bit more of a pinch there. That flower doesn't want to stick. But again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You'll see at the end, these are going to make beautiful loaves. I'm going to grab a knife and we're going to come slice uh, slits in these loaves of bread. I'll be right back. 
All right, I just have a knife here, and I'm gonna make three to four slits on here. I always do four across the top of the bread, little diagonal slits. Do you wanna try it, baby? Let's see, you see how mama did it? Yeah. Yeah, don't press down here. Let's not press down on it there. We're not going to press down. We just want to lightly slice, slice. Ah. You see? Okay, try it again over here, like right around in that area there. Don't press down. Just a light slice, slice. Do it again. One more slice. <laughs> there you go. I'm trying it. I know. You got a little bit of a slice in there. Slice, just like that. And as it rises, those are gonna open up some on there. Okay, at this point, I'm gonna set these aside and I'm gonna let them rise. Technically, you're supposed to let them rise for an hour. Mine are always fairly large after an hour. Sometimes I dial that back and I put them in the oven sooner than an hour, but play it by ear. My kitchen may be a little warmer than most possibly. So I will check back in with you and let you know if we've made it to an hour or 45 minutes. I'll let you know whenever we come back. All right, guys, an hour has passed. I actually went outside and weeded in the garden some while the bread was rising. So I had to come in and cool down so I wasn't all sweaty on camera. But this is ready. This is what it looks like after an hour. Now you can see it didn't pinch together great right there but it is fine, it is gonna be fine. And you can see the slits right there. So I have my oven set at 400 degrees and I'm gonna put these in for 25 minutes. You want to bring them out when they are beautiful golden brown. So I'm gonna put these in and I will see you guys back in about 25 minutes and we'll see what they look like. All right, timer just went off. 25 minutes have passed. We're going to see what they look like. There we go. A pretty golden brown. And they're not sticking at all. They're wiggling around all over those baking sheets. Okay. So you're going to come over here and they can get a more close up of the bread there. Pretty golden brown. We're going to let them cool here. Sarah's getting ready to start on the lasagna soup. So what I'll do is we'll come back when the soup is ready and by then the bread will have cooled a little bit. We'll slice it up, we'll slather some butter on it and you can see all that goodness. So I'll see you guys in just a little bit. All right, supper is ready. Sarah was in charge of the lasagna soup and she just got that finished. It just needs to be put in bowls with some mozzarella on top and then we'll have bread on the side there is a video for Sarah's lasagna soup, and I think it is coming out like two days prior to this one. So go back just a couple days and you should see her lasagna soup video. But it is good, good stuff. So yeah, let them see it there, Sarah. It's yummy, yummy. Not so bad if I do say so myself. <laughs> she did an all right job. So with the lasagna soup, that's why we made the bread. And I'm gonna go ahead and we'll just start slicing it up. You know, this is what it looks like in there. It's very soft on the inside and it's nice and golden brown on the bottom. So we're just gonna do some cuts of bread. <laughs> what are you giggling about? <laughs> and then butter it up. And that is what everybody will get on their plates tonight. We'll go ahead and put this in bowls and on saucers and show you what it looks like on the table. All right, they're all eating their lasagna soup. It has been given the seal of approval by children, so Sarah did a good job with that. And they're digging yeah. in on their bread too. Yeah. What, Rebecca's is gone. Yeah, she <laughs> likes it. So they're digging in on the bread too. There you go. Good stuff, baby. Uh, all right. Mama did a good job and Sarah did a good job. Really? <laughs> That's what she thinks about that. 
All right, guys, if you liked this video, please be sure to give me a thumbs up, thumbs up, <laughs> and subscribe if you have not already. And if you could tell your family and friends to watch Ozark Family Homestead, it sure would help our channel grow. If you have video ideas that you would like to see Sarah and I do, please put those in the comments as well. Until next time, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Ozark.